Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mind Your Mental, a podcast about all things mental health, everything from coping and stress to love and relationships. I am your host, Raquel Martin, a PhD candidate in medical and clinical psychology. This podcast is not meant to be a substitute for a relationship with a licensed mental health clinician. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to another Martin Minute. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me today. So today I wanted to talk about affect identification. Affect identification is basically a fancy word for saying emotion identification. I mean, that's just what it is. But why is affect identification so important? It's incredibly important because so many times we are expecting individuals to understand what we mean by our words and our words are not specific enough when it comes to our emotions. What do I mean by that? So I did this interview and I was explaining this and I couldn't help but think about how great this example I used was. So I'm going to use it again. If you tell someone that you are hungry or you're feeling a little peckish, right? And they give you a cracker. I'm sure you'll be irritated to a certain extent, but if you're like, oh, I just want a little snack and they gave me a cracker, okay. If you tell someone that you are starving, famished, haven't eaten in days, and they give you a cracker, you're probably gonna flip a table on them, on them, right? Because it's like, why would you, if I told you I am starving, why the flip would you over here give me one of these little uh, Ritz crackers? Clearly, I need a couple of sandwiches, you know? <laughs> but... I say that to say so many times we are expecting individuals to give us a four course meal when we told them all we needed was, you know, trail mix. Right. And that has to do with our emotions, too. How? How does that have to do with our emotions? Well, sometimes it's because we're not identifying our emotions appropriately in the first place and we're not accurately talking about or having the time to look into the range of emotions. There's a difference between being happy and ecstatic. There's a difference between being hungry and starving. There's a difference between being sad and depressed. And when we continue to use these same words when we're describing how we're feeling, we're doing ourselves a disservice and we're doing other people a disservice to others who are trying to care for us. If you said when you were angry that you were angry, if you said when you were infuriated that you were angry, if you said when you were frustrated that you were angry, how am I supposed to know what you're feeling? In addition to how am I supposed to know how to help you during this time, right? Let's go back to the hunger example. If you say you're feeling peckish, I'll give you crackers. If you say you're hungry, I'll give you a sandwich. And if you say you're starving, we're going to get a three-course meal. The same thing goes for your emotions, Because we don't really just have emotions such as happiness and sadness and surprise and fear and anger. We have disgust, we have contempt, we have anxiety, we have frustration. You know, it's one of the reasons why I can't stand the word fine. Because what what, what, what does fine mean? I one time looked up uh, emotions when I'm trying to work with my children and work with my patients on uh, appropriately identifying emotions. So I did this feelings chart or whatever. And I printed some out and we made our own, you know, just to integrate it into their daily lives. And fine was actually under the emotions of happiness. And when I think of fine, I don't think of happiness, right? I think of kind of neutral, but actually most of the time when someone tells me that they're fine, I ask them to explain it further because, you know, I always think of that picture. (laughs) I forget what cartoon it is, but there's a guy and he's drinking a cup of coffee. It's a dog. A dog, he's drinking a cup of coffee and the whole house is in flames. And they're like, I'm fine. This is fine. Some people use fine, not because they actually feel like they're fine, but they just don't feel like talking about it. Or they want to be passive aggressive, or they're trying to give you the silent treatment as a way of forcing you to engage with them and you know, that's a whole nother episode. But when it comes down to these emotions, I like to think about how big the emotion is. And that helps me to identify how I can help you. So it's helpful when you are talking to people to also do this, right? So when I am feeling frustrated, I need a minute to think about a solution. When I am feeling frustrated, I need your assistance to help you to help me think of a solution versus when I am feeling angry, I need space. 
And when you specify how you're feeling and the things that help you when you're feeling these certain things, you also help yourself to identify what you need. If you could put a name to it, you, you know, you can't heal what you don't reveal, you name it, you claim it, all those wonderful statements. But if you have someone around you who's trying to care for you and who's trying to help you as well, you also provide them with that ability to help you in a more specific manner. Everyone talks about love languages. One, I know everyone says, you know, this is my love language, but nowhere is it written down that you only get one. So think about multiple love languages. My love language, for example, is insults. I just love it. I just, I just, just love it. Just someone just like love a good burn. I'm like, ooh, that was good. Give me a hug. That was what's up. But um, <laughs> you don't get just one. But two, we focus so much on how people express their love. We, I think we need to focus more on how people express their frustration and what they need when they're angry. I used to, have, <laughs> I used to have this whole thing when I when I was first dating. He's now my husband. When I was first dating him, and um, I my relationship before that sucked. So I realized that I was never going to get to the point where I was screaming at someone again. It's just not going to happen. Like you're not going to take me outside of myself. So I would do this thing where I'm like, mm, I don't like the way this is going. You made me upset. I will see you on Thursday. Dude would be like, it's Monday. I'll see you on Thursday. Don't contact me. <laughs> like, just because. <laughs> it, is, it wasn't like it's supposed to be a full breakup. But one, this is me having a pivot to the extreme of previous relationship. I'm over here being taken outside of myself, screaming at somebody. I decided I'm no longer going to scream at, scream at someone. So I'm just going to remove myself from the situation. Mind you, my husband was like, mm, this isn't a thing. Now, luckily, he expressed this to me like, yes, so... One, I don't know the intricacies of your previous relationship. With two, you walking away from me and saying, I'm not going to speak to you for days. That's not healthy. And he was absolutely right. But we had to process that and talk about that and have the history behind it to have the point where it's just like, okay, when I am upset, I need space for a minute. I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to walk away. But I don't want to talk about it right now, given what's going on. If that's okay with you, we can go from there and we'll figure it out. We need to monitor ourselves, not just solely with the emotions, but figuring out the intricacies of what we are feeling and when it comes down to the emotions, because no time on earth do you really get to do like, like we, the world really just forces us to do things so quickly and then we do it quickly. We don't get to process it. And then we don't realize when it has come back to us full circle, like 50,000 times, like, Hey, hmm, it's come to my attention that I am expressing this feeling and it's actually this feeling. And I've done this 27 times in the past 28 days. And if I had taken the time to process this or even acknowledge that this is what was happening, probably wouldn't have to do this again. But all that also comes with self-monitoring. I will always say self-monitoring is incredibly important and it's something that's necessary to do and it's something that's difficult to do and it's something that we don't really get the opportunity to do in this day and age when everything needs to be done yesterday and ASAP. And last time I checked, ASAP is not a day on my calendar and things of that nature. So you don't really get to take the time to look into that. And self-monitoring, I think, will always be a protective factor. I think you need to be the inspector gadget of you. You need to be the Columbo of you. I'm trying to think of another inspector because I said inspector gadget in one of my sessions and my resident looked at me like... I had a horn growing out of my forehead and I was like, oh, Lord, help him. Jesus, be a fence. Because he clearly didn't know what I was saying. But how can you expect others to grasp where you're coming from? How can you expect others to fathom what you're trying to say? How can you expect others to empathize with your feelings when you don't know the full intricacy of it? Like when it comes to anger. Anger is often referred to as a secondary emotion. Why? Why? Because most of the time we use anger to protect ourselves from from another feeling or a vulnerable feeling and things of that nature. It's like the anger iceberg, you know, Titanic sunk because what was below the water, not what was above it. Anger is what you see, but most you could be feeling fear, angst, concern, pressure, You may be feeling trapped, offended, disrespectful, and you respond accordingly. So many times people are saying they're angry and they're scared. And you're going to approach an angry person differently than you're going to approach a scared person or a fearful person. Because those words hold, hold different meanings. It's one of the, the reasons why when someone gives me something that I don't feel as though I earned emotion-wise, right? Like I got the answer wrong and they decided to punch a wall because of it. And it's like, oh, so what's going on with you? Because clearly 
your actions are saying something that you don't have the words for because you gave me more than I needed from that behavior. It was totally unnecessary. You know, it's also occupational hazard because I'm just so used to having people in my sessions saying they're fine while tears are pouring down their face (laughs) saying they're okay and they don't need to talk. When their fingers are in fists, they're clenched and they're you know, their shoulders are up by their ears and they're frowning and just saying they're okay. And it's because you're just so used to invalidating yourself because someone has invalidated you or you don't have the words for it. So sometimes you decide not to say it that you don't realize that you're not okay or you don't want to acknowledge that you're not okay. And that's what gets in the way of your progress. We're always looking for progress, not perfection. So here are some tangible things, right? I try to make sure that we're not staying in the abstract the entire episode and I try to make sure we're having examples. So if we're talking about the range of emotions, I like to come up with an emotion thermometer all the time. And I will say, say the emotion is happiness, right? Happiness can have many different levels. When it comes to the range of happiness, I will put most of the time ecstatic on the top because that would be like a firm 10. So ecstatic is a 10. And then I think of something that would make me feel ecstatic. And I put that as my anchor. Because you know that that would happen. So range of emotions, if we're talking about happiness, ecstatic is, I don't know, winning the lottery or something like that, you know? And then I would come down and then I would think of like something that would make me content and put that there. And then I try to fill in the different levels. Now, you don't have to always go from zero to 10 because I, I think sometimes that's just, I don't know, overwhelming. But if happiness, a strong feeling of happiness is ecstatic and a light feeling happiness is content, maybe a medium feeling of happiness is just feeling like cheerful. So... Lottery is a 10. Content is had a reasonably okay okay meal. Medium is full night's sleep or something like that. And I do that for a lot of emotions. Like I will also do that for sadness. Like a strong feeling of sadness would be hopelessness. A moderate feeling of sadness will just be down or unhappy. A medium might be, you know, feeling distressed or discouraged. And then I also write what I need during each of those moments. And I may deal, do that for anger. I may do that for confusion. I may do that for loneliness. And then I see if I can identify what things make me feel that way. There could be multiple examples. When was the last time I felt that way? And what helped me during those times? And then I actively work on using those appropriate words when I'm feeling those way, those, those, those ways and, and going from there. And it helps me to realize what has been useful. And then if I find that nothing helps me during that time, then I likely look up some skills that'll help me going forward and go from there. But as always, thank you so much for tuning in to the Martin Minute. Uh, I really appreciate every single person has, who has been on this journey with me. This is Dr. Raquel Martin reminding you to be kind to yourself. Are you still there? (laughs) Great. Well, thank you again for listening to this episode of Mind Your Mental Podcast. If you like what you heard, please subscribe, rate, and review me. You can also follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Raquel Martin PhD for mental health tips, education, and even long videos about things that really moved me during the week that I think are necessary to talk about. Also, join me again in two weeks for another episode. Thank you again, guys. And remember to be kind to yourself. Thank you.